News Talk, Saga 960 Bra, Mike Richards here on your uh, Tuesday. A little overcast, a little rain. So far, okay on the roads. And speaking of roads, I always, I always wondered, just because I, I'm not that smart a person, that if you uh, race for a living, you know, you're someone that's used to speeds, and then you just get in your car. I, I couldn't imagine being on a o- open space, and I just think, hey, man, I'm used to going so fast. Watch this. And did I put on an accent? Yeah, I think I got a dead. <laughs> and James Hinchcliffe, I don't think, would ever do something as foolish or careless as that. Is that true, James? Because you would, you, you, you don't do that. You would, you'd never do that. Never. Never. And that's the truth. And the, and the honest truth is, you know, I, uh, people who speed on the road, there's a big difference between them and, and most racing drivers. We've hit stuff going fast. Most people haven't done that. We know how much that hurts in a race car with a lot more safety built around me and a track designed to keep me safe. So the thought of hitting anything in a road car actually is terrifying. So no, I I drive like a grandmother. My wife will tell you. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for joining us here this morning uh, to talk about Formula E because, you know, I was so fascinated upon seeing that, and I guess maybe the evolution of of what we do, not only in sport, but as a society where you're looking at, um, you know, energy and, and, and things being green. And at some point in order for, you know, that need for speed, I, I realize there are very, very uh, smart individuals who probably, you know, decades ago started figuring out that maybe there's going to be another way in which we could race and looking at the speeds, the ability of, of the batteries and so on, what it takes for these vehicles is right out of science fiction for me, James. I mean, when I, when I saw it, I said, well, how fast do they go? Well, when I'm seeing like these speeds of a, what, 180 miles per hour or 250, like it is absolutely stunning that someone in this world has come up with a way to go that speed on electricity. <laughs> it is. And, and that's honestly what's so cool about motorsports in general. And then, as you say, you know, as, as the world changes and the focus changes, Formula E specifically, motorsports is the only sport that, on top of being entertainment and being sport, actually contribute something back to technology and and essentially society. You know, what is so cool about Formula E, for those that don't know, it's essentially looks like an Indy car or Formula One car. It's a single seater open wheel race car, but it's purely electric. It runs purely on battery powered, still doing 280 kilometers an hour. And what it does is it offers this incredible platform for the auto manufacturers to come and develop their electric motor technology and their battery technology that ultimately ends up in the road cars and the EVs that we're going to be driving over the next, you know, five, 10, 20 years. So it's, it's a really cool platform in that sense. So it's almost what the better part of 10 years that this is sort of developed as a, an actual event uh, as in, as in a, a, a form of racing. Yeah, and and uh, I think we're in season eight now. And if if you look at the development when this when the series started, they had to have pit stops where drivers literally got out of one car and into another car because the battery couldn't last the race distance. Now, as the technology is developed, they're much faster. The battery technology is better, so they can do a whole forty five minute race on a single charge. And and it's finally coming back to Canada. So we've we've got the race coming to uh, to Vancouver Canada Day weekend, and so Canadians will get a chance to uh, to see it in person. Well, the Vancouver E Prix they're calling it. So so July second, as you said, that that long weekend. Um, and now that the world is open again for the most part, you see people getting together. I couldn't imagine what this is going to look like because there, uh, James. There's uh, <laughs> there's two years of pent up <laughs> and, and, and fun that just wants to break loose and a summer day in Vancouver with the, you know, the, the streets looking like they will. Oh my God. I can't believe how big this is going to be. And, and it's not even just a summer day. It's a summer weekend. You know, yeah. the E-Pre is sort of the, the highlight on the, on the Saturday, but over the weekend, it's, it's a three day event. We have, uh, you know, it's, it's called Canadian E-Fest. That's the whole thing. The business conference kicks it all off, which is really just a way for businesses to get together, talk about sustainability, taking care of the planet moving forward. Then on Friday, we actually have the celebrity race. So it's pretty cool. We've got these Canadian designed, they're little one seater, three wheeled electric cars. And we got a list of 12 celebrities, Canadian celebrities that are going to come out and, uh, and race around the track there, which will be really entertaining. And then of course, Saturday is, is the, uh, the formula E race. And, 
And we've got concerts scattered out throughout the weekend as well. So it's, it really is a full weekend of activity, some for the whole family. And uh, I, I can't wait. I'm really excited to see it. Now, for the vehicles that would look, they would look like Indy cars, would they? Is that, that sort of the look? Very similar. Uh, very similar. Now to drive them, does it drive very different? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so how does that work then? What, what, what is the, the difference mainly? So uh, the biggest difference from a driving perspective is there's no gearbox. If you think of electric vehicles, right, they can, de they can deliver 100% torque instantaneously. So there's really no need for gears. So from a driver's perspective, there's no paddles on the back changing gears. You don't have to worry about the clutch or anything like that. Uh, and then the other part of it is the drivers actually have a lot of control over how the car regenerates energy. Right. So what's so fascinating about this technology is, yeah, you're spending energy to go fast, but it's not just the energy you got from the batteries by plugging it in before the race. You recharge energy under braking and you can, as the mm. driver can control how much energy you're recharging. Now, it takes away a bit of speed to do that. So there's a trade off and there's a there's a really big sort of, you know, 200 kilometer an hour chess match that's happening inside these drivers minds trying to figure out, okay, when do I need to push? When do I need to conserve? How can I make sure I have enough battery to make it to the end? Because sometimes you do see drivers run out of battery before they get across the finish line. So it's, it's a really fun strategic kind of thing these, these drivers have to do. Like it's, it's interesting. It's almost like in the day when pilots had to figure out just how much fuel they had, how far they could go because they'll drop out of the sky when once it's over. Right. Uh, but it, you're doing it on the fly in between <laughs> concrete walls rather than up in, in the air where you got a lot of room to think about it. Well, it's, it's, there's so many challenges, but there's also within the race itself, some, some real differences, including this, this attack mode, which people are like, well, I've seen that in NASCAR when they swap paint. No, no, no. It's not that. It's different. It is very different. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> there are two things that that Formula E does that are really unique, and I think the fans really get behind. The one is the attack mode, which. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's almost like a video game. You have to drive over a certain part of the racetrack and then you get a little boost in your energy. So it, it the computer automatically unlocks a, a little extra wattage, you know, horsepower, so to speak. And you can only use it a couple of times, one or two times during a race. So again, there's some strategy over, do you use it to make an overtake? Do you use it to defend against an overtake? When do you use it? And then the other part of it that fans really like is the fan boost. So before each race, you can go and vote for your favorite driver and the winner will actually get a little boost of energy to use thanks to the fans. So it's a way to kind of keep the fans engaged, vote for your favorite driver, watch them race on, on the weekend to see, uh, to see if they do well. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's different, but it's fun. We're in conversation with James Hinchcliffe here on Raw Mike Richards News Talk Saga 960. And when I looked at the background of a lot of the, uh, the, the, the drivers themselves, it, in terms of the countries, it's literally reads the same as it would in an F1 race where they're coming from England, they're coming from Switzerland, they're coming from Italy. Like it, it kind of is the same thing. So I wonder culturally, does it sort of fit in similar down the similar path that it would if they were in the actual uh, F1 and everything else? Because it seems like it's very almost identical. Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, it's it's kind of modeled after F1. F1, you know, is, is globally the the pinnacle of the sport, you know, and if you look at how FE has a massively multicultural lineup of drivers, teams from all over, uh, they travel all over the world, you know, the races, you know, it truly is a global championship. And a lot of these drivers either have F1 experience or were part of an F1 development program. Um, it's kind of either future F1 drivers or past F1 drivers, but a lot of them have, have Formula One experience. So it's a, it's a very, very deep field. Uh, and if, if you've never seen it and, you, and you've got some interest, there is a race this weekend in Rome. Uh, it's at 8.30 Eastern on TSN uh, both, both days. So if, if you want to check it out and kind of see what it's all about, there's a, there's a good sample to it. And then hopefully that'll convince you to come out to Vancouver on Canada Day weekend. Well, are all the, 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 the supermodels going to be following that, uh, that as well? Because I, I got I to be honest, being in Monaco, that was kind of the part, part of the appeal. Yeah, well, yeah, I just have to tune in and find out. <laughs> that's a very good and safe answer. See, <laughs> that's why you think on the go. You're going a couple hundred miles an hour. That's, that's, that's how you think. Uh, it is, uh, you know, in talking about fan boost, it's, it's the way that, that fans can vote for their favorite driver online. Like it is literally a reflection of what we are doing in our current society on all these levels. So number one, it's sort of, you know, what, where, where you're going green, where you're, you're talking about, you know, uh, electric 
uh, propulsion, I guess. But you're also with the gaming and, and being online and connecting to the fans this way. Like it is as modern, I think, uh, a sport in terms of reflecting what's happening in the world as I've ever seen. I think you're right, you know, and, and you sorry, you brought up something I forgot to mention, which is the esports side of it. There's an esports element to the weekend in Vancouver as well. And that's a very big part of what FE is doing. And it, uh, you know, look, everything has to evolve. All sports have to evolve. We see rule changes across any and every sport, but racing is a little bit unique in, in how technologically advanced it is. It's a little bit closer to some of that stuff. And then especially with FE, you know, it really is on the cutting edge of tech and, when you see the, the the boom in electric vehicles on the road, like I said, it, it makes it super relevant. But then on the off track side, the way they're engaging with fans, be it through esports or through, you know, like it's it's likes, right? I mean, you're 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 voting for your your favorite driver. <laughs> it's like it, it's Instagram. It's what everybody does all day long anyway. So they've uh, they've been very forward thinking in how to sort of capture and and keep that audience. So are you saying then it is possible for drivers that may have, and it does flare up occasionally when they're not in the cars, that instead of maybe a, a, a driving move that they were not uh, particularly fond of, that I could say to you and another guy said, yeah, well, uh, you didn't get any likes this last, uh, this last, <laughs> how dare you, how dare yeah. you? It's funny. I, I wonder how much they uh, they use that against each other. Like who gets the fan boost every weekend? You know, it's uh, that's, that's a good point. I, I have to I have to quiz some of them about that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't need some pouty European guy going, well, who, of course you're upset. You only have 22 <laughs> likes, 22 <laughs> likes. My mother, my mother has 22 likes. You're a loser. You're a loser, Mike. <laughs> it is uh, so fascinating to see this and 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 look you, you're a popular guy and, and what I always think is interesting is they always say the pride of someplace right so uh, if you're the pride of Oakville and, and, and you know for me in, in in these years where I'm you know on TSN or whatever it's like ah oh, the pride of Stovall I gotta tell you Stovall's not that proud <laughs> Stovall <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Stowell, come on now. Stowell, Stowell Stowell was, was, they might talk about Keith Acton or some of the hockey players uh, before they're going to talk about me. But Oakville, how right. Oakvillian uh, are you? Like, you ever say connected to the town? Yeah, I mean, I, I still have a place there. Um, you know, my wife and I have a condo right downtown Oakville, and uh, both of our both of our families live in Oakville. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm back there quite often, and it's still, it's still home, always will be. You know, I, I love it there. You know, it's a – and it is great. I mean, Canadians are really – uh, I mean, maybe everyone says that they're proud of, 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 of those that come from a certain place, but they're, Canada treats all those that, that do well, like their family. Like there's a real, like whether it's John Candy, second city hockey players were used to a certain relationship, but, but when it's beyond hockey, sometimes it's like they'll, they'll use a first name. They, they, they won't use a last name. You know, it, it becomes very, very personal. And uh, some of the guys who have gone on and do a lot of different things, like Jason Priestley, for instance, is going to be in that celebrity race. And he's a really interesting guy. I've, I've talked to him many times, been on the show many times. And, you know, whether it's the wine industry or, you know, just talking about some of the shows he's been in. But, you know, in Vancouver for that weekend, you know, he's going to be front and center. Uh, he's always really great with the fans. And I think when you start talking about these weekends, these events, because I never got a chance to go to, to, to Montreal during Grand Prix. And, and, right. and, and they said, you know, at least on your bucket list, you have to attend one of these events. I got a feeling, really, James, this is the weekend that we're talking about in Vancouver. It's one of these. I mean, absolutely. It's going to be, it's going to be on the list. You know, I mean, Canada, you know, first of all, to your first point, I mean, they do really get behind their athletes. They get behind their events. I mean, I, I felt that so much as a driver. Um, it was, it was awesome. And, you know, it wasn't just Oakville. It was Toronto, Ontario, the country. It was, it was everywhere. It was awesome to, uh, to experience. And now, yeah, I mean, for a, for a population wise, a relatively small country, we produce a lot of good motorsports, you know, drivers, engineers. Uh, we have a lot of companies that are in the, in the racing industry uh, that are based in, in Canada. And now events, you know, obviously we've got F1 in Montreal. We've got the IndyCar race in Toronto. And now hopefully for many years to come, Formula E in Vancouver. So it's kind of a little something for everyone across the country. Yeah, they do come now. I think about it. Uh, there was, uh, I think in the Canada, Canadian series, a guy by the name of uh, Peter Gibbons or Pete Gibbons. Mm -hmm. uh, I go, Pete Gibbons, he was in my phys ed class. He used to flick flick other kids in the ears oh no he's a big, <laughs> big driver now oh really said well, well don't let him get out of the car because you're gonna flick those guys the ears and it's gonna hurt <laughs> that's why he wears a helmet so nobody can flick his <laughs> yeah. that's why he got into the sport <laughs> that's exactly right james thanks so much for joining us this morning this is so fascinating 
And this is something that just has such enormous upside. I just can't believe that this isn't going to, I mean, I don't know if you replace anything, but certainly it's just one more thing. If you're into motorsports, how is this not something that you add to? And again, I think the bucket list as it goes around uh, the world, and as you said, in Rome, which would be just a fascinating place. And as I said, uh, you know, you go to places like Monaco and it, it, it is this culture that, that follows the sport in Europe. It's just, it, it just is, it's a part of what you do. I can't see this not being a part of that very very soon if it's not already if it's not already yeah that's that's definitely the hope is that it really becomes you know part of the dna of, of the city and uh, the support from the city has been great the the fan engagement already has been good you know they used to have an indy car race in vancouver a bunch of years ago it was massively popular amongst not just the fans in town but the drivers and the teams the people that traveled to all these places they loved coming to vancouver and so it's uh, it's great that we finally got something you know back on the calendar there from motorsports side and, and like i said hopefully it's for many many years to come Oh, well, thank you so much for, for, for uh, sparing this time uh, this morning for us. We really appreciate it. Best of luck, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk again sometime. Sounds great. Thanks so much for having me on. That is James Hinchcliffe uh, joins here this morning as we are talking about Formula E, a uh, fascinating uh, subject. And, uh, you know, even for those that, and I find that you can be a casual fan. You don't have to be, you know, one of these guys that's, uh, you know, a gearbox or whatever you want to call them that, that it has to be. I mean, this is just so almost futuristic. The reality is the future is now. And if you're looking for someplace to be, I would suggest a long weekend in Vancouver. Uh, pretty good. Uh, put it on your list.